Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Latoya London is on the line. Latoya, la, 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 Latoya. Hey, hey, hey! Yes, just ice. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. You know about hey, just ice. Hey. What yes. up? I, I look. I know all about it. What's up, Sway? What's, What's up, up Latoya? What up, girl? Double L. Thank you. Double L L L L L. Did you just? Did she name check just ice? Oh, yes. yes. I said, look, I look. said I la, 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 Latoya. She said, yes, just that. She came right through. I love that, Latoya. <laughs> uh, Latoya has had such an amazing career, and I'm just saying this for myself, not to embarrass you or anything, because I know you're a very humble person, but also a very confident person. Um, and we, you know, we talk about it all the time. I know it was way back in 05 or whatever, but we were so proud to see you on American Idol and, and the music yeah. that you released ever since. And even though she went to Skyline High, which was the nemesis to Oakland High, she turned out great, Heather. She's one of the ones that turned out great. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you know, that. absolutely. Uh, even during the tour with the Oprah Winfrey a musical, The Color Purple, and you killed it with that, with doing Sug Avery. Um, and you. you just shown that you have so a multitude of talent, and I've always admired that about you, but you just went to another level by name-checking Just Ice. Ain't that crazy? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know I'm into the old school. I, you know, but yeah, yeah. People say that Latoya. You know, we both from Oakland. Like, here's the history. Her brother Troy, uh, Heather, him and I, we used to uh, I always talk about running track. I've told all these stories about running track in AAU, and he used to run for a uh, track club called EOYDC, East Oakland Youth Development Center, along with a lot of other just talented individuals. So, since we were kids, I known her brother. Right. Uh Um, I mean, grade school age. And when my brother T. Calloway was like, you know, that uh, Latoya London is Troy from EOYDC's sister. It was like, then we got work to do. So I'm so proud of you, Latoya, as much as you as much as you continue to do. How your brother doing? He's doing great. He is doing great. Um, He's probably teaching right now. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, he's uh, educating the youth. So that's what he does. yeah, virtually now. You virtually. Know. But, uh, yeah, he's doing great. Did he ever tell you stories about how fast the Callaways were on the track? Did he ever oh, mention that? wow. <laughs> I'm so sorry to tell you. He only <laughs> talked about himself and Lili. And, you remember? <laughs> Lili, yeah, Lili. Uh, man, come on, Lili was incredible. <laughs> Lili was incredible. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's what he talks about. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> himself. But, <laughs> himself. Uh, that's how those EOYDC guys were. That's why we used to always beat them. Um, I'm sure I'm gonna get calls from that. Uh, so did y'all? Did y'all? So when I grew up on 23rd Ave, uh, T. Calloway, my brother, everything he would play from you know, T. Calloway really just. That's how I know everything from Treacherous Three to Just Ice to Mantronics to whoever Sequence, uh, mm-hmm. Tila Rock, all these groups how did you grow up did you was hip-hop in the house or i thought it was more church in your house well it was it was a multitude of things so you know definitely church um also definitely r and B. I i mean constant and then with with hip-hop you know my brother he was 10 years older than me so i was exposed to what he was listening to um but i remember at the time like and also the radio like i remember um Freeze? Who who's free who was that? I don't remember. Okay. Wow. Uh, I don't remember. But like yeah. there's specific songs that I remember and then so and and Latoya, I rem I don't know if I remember it then, but it was I was exposed to it later. And when I found out that there was a song called Latoya, that's when I looked, oh, it's just ice. So that just added to kind of what I already uh, was exposed to, you know. And then really at the time that I truly remember, my brother was deep into Bob Marley. So he exposed me to reggae. Um, yeah, and then, wow, when like, then he went off to college uh-huh. and I would go and, and spend weekends with him at, at the bachelor pad with, with all the college boys and stuff. I was little sis. So uh-huh. then it was like, yo, and TV rap and they would, they would record it on the VHS. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <watch> later. And, <laughs> like, <laughs> 
So I was just engulfed in it that way. Yeah. That's how you got into it. And, you know, I always like people from Oakland. I'm going to let HB and, 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 um, and Tracy jump in, of course. Uh, but I always wonder about the journey because it may not feel like it, but for me at least, uh, La- La- Latoya, I came up, uh, you know, after running track and, and even up at Mary College. Your brother, your, Troy went to Mary too, right? Did Troy ever? Uh, no. Where did he, he go? Never he went to San Jose State. Oh, he went to San Jose State. Dow. That's right. That's right. That's mm-hmm. right. He went straight to San Jose because T. Cal went there too. Um, uh, so I always wonder what people's journey was like because it wasn't easy for King Tech and I. You know, like we mm-hmm. first started thinking about making, start making music in high school and we couldn't get record deals being from Oakland at that time. And we didn't have mm-hmm. a, a buzz and you didn't have social media and all those other assets to help bring attention to you. And so it was hard getting music played on the radio. It was hard getting music in stores. It was, you yeah. know, everything was hard and you just kind of had to do all the local events and hope even when you did local events that have a quick impact and then you got to jump right back on it. So to watch you make it right. to that American Idol stage prior to that, like how did you navigate the Bay Area and becoming who you are? Like what were some of those key moments that helped elevate your your, your, yeah. your, your career? So um, my mom, she put me in talent shows in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh-huh. And um, that's where I started to get more exposure. Um, and, you know, I, I didn't even win, win the talent shows. Like, you know, and that kind of built my muscle of, of handling disappointment, you know. Uh-huh. Um, but, uh, yeah, so talent shows. And then I would get exposure from that. And then I would get hired to perform at different private events. You know, um, my mom also was very involved in um, talent. I mean, not talent shows. I'm sorry. um, Fashion shows. So I don't know if people Mm -hmm. from the Bay remember Sabrina Samuels. She had a finishing school called Beckman Image Development. So being involved with that, I was also a student. But I I would sing every year at her uh, banquets and the graduations from uh, with the girls graduating. And um, she also had a lot of other events at the Hilton Hotel in Oakland. So just from different things that I would do and the exposure that I got, more opportunities would come. People would, you know, talk to my mom or my dad and want to hire me for, you know, to come sing for their event. Um, And then from there, uh, I was just engulfed in, in choirs, my church choir, my, you know, Skyline High School choir. I was in the Oakland Youth mm-hmm. Course. Um and so, you know, all the dots just started connecting as far as just getting to know people. Then from there, um, you know, I got into singing in the studio when I was about 12, actually. And then about 16, I did uh, vocal lessons with Jackie Hairston, the legendary Jackie Hairston, who also vocal uh-huh. coached in Vogue and uh, Tony, 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 and, and a lot of great mm-hmm. within Oakland. Um, And then through her, I was exposed to major producers like Preston Glass, who wrote Who's Zoom and Who with um, with uh, uh, Aretha Franklin, you know, the legendary Aretha Mm -hmm. Franklin. And and he worked with Natalie Cole. I think he did. I miss you like crazy. So that's where I learned my studio etiquette, you know, (laughs) Mm -hmm. and also Mm -hmm. meeting people through him. And so um, from there. Let's see. I, I entered into bands. I started, man, I was in Jeffrey's inner so- circle uh, about, I was 18. I had like a fake ID. <laughs> and they were having, uh-huh. um, Jeffrey's, man. They were having, uh, yeah, they were having uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> talent shows there. So I was Yo- entering into talent shows there. And then I started to meet more people and then started to sing at other clubs, Mingles, when Mingles was going on down in Jack London. Um, The Serenator, I used to sing there every Wednesday. I sang at the End Zone on High Street every Sunday. Um, And then I entered into the corporate (laughs) band world. Okay, now you start making money. Just to put things in perspective, some of these Jeffrey's, Jeffrey's iconic club in the Bay, every big event moment that's probably legendary moment that's happened has happened in that club uh the end yeah. zone is on high street if you remember i had Linnell when we had Linnell back in the day heather yeah. and, and Linnell would talk about sway sway would show up to the end zone the end zone on that menu was <laughs> hennessy and chicken wings so <laughs> you know that if you went My to the end party. zone you must have 
Yeah, you you was comfortable in your skin if you at the end zone. You you you, you know, it's so I'm just giving a, a a perimeter of all the different layers and levels of of stuff you've done yeah. to even we not even yeah. halfway through to get to this point. Um Man, and then exactly. American Idol right. American Idol, how did that you know, do you you know, um, uh being on American Idol, how do you think that impacted your career pros and cons? Oh, man. So pros, of course, like it just, you know, gave me that world wide exposure, you know, that I was longing for, you know, being a local uh, artist. And, um, you know, I I didn't even realize the multitude, though, like while you're in it, you know, because you're kind of they kind of keep you, you know, sheltered in this bubble. So you're not, you know, you're only watching the show you know, every week, you're not really reading the press, you're not, um, you know, you're, you're really busy, you know, rehearsing and getting the show together. Um, so that that was the pros from that just that exposure. Um, I, I Honestly, the cons, I don't really say there really is any cons. I mean, I was, I was afraid okay. of cons, you know, as far as uh, before I even uh-huh. auditioned. Uh, you know, I was hearing through the grapevine that, you know, if you do shows like that, it'll pigeonhole you. You know, people are only associate you with that or you won't be able to grow past that. And so I was a little reluctant to do it, but I had so many people around me encouraging me to do it that I just followed. I just followed my instinct and my instinct said, go ahead and just see what happens. You know, and I had I, that is. same weekend that the uh the auditions were in LA at the Rose Bowl actually in Pasadena I was actually moving to LA to go to Musicians Institute that same weekend so it was like perfect and I went down there I slept outside like everybody else and went up in the uh in in the stadium you know halfway funky halfway looking crazy and I <laughs> uh-huh <laughs> you know, we had to find ways to keep clean cuz we know you know <laughs> Yeah, you smell and um, it. I did my musty. thing. You know what I'm saying? You know, brush your teeth with a water <laughs> bottle, but you know, and and I did my thing, and and the rest was history. So I can't say that there was really any cons about it. You know, it was all pros yep. for me. Yeah. Simon Cow says she was the best singer of the season, uh, and you ultimately mm. signed a, a recording deal with Conquer Records. I want to play this song called "Appreciate." Uh, featuring Black Thought, and then come back and talk about the new single and open up these phone lines. Uh, Latoya London is here. uh, Sway in the morning. You want to talk with her? 888-742-3345. Yeah. Sway in the morning. Say four five. Latoya London. Ah, that's a classic. Loved it when you got Black Thought on there. Talk about your boyfriend and all that stuff. Um, so what happened, Sway? Why you have to say it like that? I'm just Jones saying. Just being big bro. What's yeah, that's my, little, that's my little sister. I'm boyfriend. <laughs> let me, let, let's bring her in a conversation we were having when, when, before we got on the line with LaToya. Uh, uh, um, about Mariah? Could, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Latoya, I'm going to break it down for you real quick. Actually, it will be really interesting to get your POV. So I'm sure you know Mariah has her memoir that has just been blowing up with all of these different um, stories she's revealing. And one of them, she talked about her ex-fiance, that billionaire, James Packer, and how they never had a physical relationship. Hmm. I guess it was just conversation. Maybe she, she was eye candy. Right. But there was nothing physical going down. And Sway was like, okay. how can this be? He was trying to have me and Heather explain this type of situation. I don't get it. <laughs> you know where we from, Latoya. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Um, so how that can be is, you know, well, women, and I don't know it was the decision to not be physical on her part or his part. Um you know, who initiated that? And then did the other agree to it? So that's a question. Uh-huh. Um, but in general, it is possible because some people, I forgot what you call it, but some people are more attracted to a person's mind rather than them physically. And especially when you start to, to mature, you start to discover who you really are and what really drives you. 
And so some people, you know, uh, uh, when we're younger, you know, we just, we're exposed to sex, 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 you know what I mean? So, so we're just sometimes having sex without the, without even knowing what we're really doing and what it really means, uh-huh. you know? So, and as you grow, you understand, okay, wait a minute, this is my stance on this. This is how sex makes me feel. And so actually it's really important who I share my body with and all that. And so then you might even develop into a space of, you know what, sex, eh, been there, done that. I'm not really tripping off of that. I'm more into your mind and, and, and your beliefs and how we get along, you know, beyond sex, that other type of intimacy. And so that is a possible thing. Hmm. Wait. You, you, yes, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> so let me. You, let me, you let me, haven't reached that yet? <laughs> Uh, I just think, and this is, you know, we, you grown now, so we got these conversations. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you, you would take the home, you would take the car home without test driving it. I mean, if I'm never going to really drive it like that, then, and I'm just going to look at the car. I'm just bringing the car just to admire the car. The you taking the, the car, car. This is your car. This is the car you're going right. to park in your garage. You jumping in every day. You you know, y'all going grocery shopping. Y'all going on vacations. It's your car. It's your dude. So the test driving is equivalent to the sex, right? So yeah. if there is no sex, that means I'm not driving the car. I'm just going to appreciate the car. Oh. So I'm buying the car just so I can look at it every day. And be like, Damn, that's a beautiful you, ass car. Right. You hear some that Oakland? Just, love that car. You hear that <laughs> Oakland people. shit right there, boy? T- <laughs> Listen, some people just want a nice car to take selfies with. So yeah. Mm-hmm. That goes back to the whole the whole eye candy thing. But Latoya, I want you to really take us into your Broadway bag real quick because mm-hmm. okay. it's heavy with the color purple i'm yeah. not sure if people really understand the waves that you are making um on stage and the type of respect that you are being given with the an NAACP theater award nomination for um you know your work with the color purple um redemption of a dog with our guy our fella our family snoop tyler perry so much and I think yeah. we're such such big fans of Lynn Manuel. You know the way Hamilton just brought in an entire new audience into theater. Mm-hmm. The longest mm-hmm. longest time I feel like Broadway was just looked at as this like elitist form of entertainment where just black mm-hmm. people were not welcomed, just straight up. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. and now we're seeing um, this new renaissance. Can you talk? about how the hell you got your start in Broadway and then also <laughs> the shift in the audience because I'm mm. sure it must be something crazy just seeing you know the different levels of melanin in those seats when you're on stage yeah yeah definitely um well I will say that I had no idea what Broadway really was you know when I was younger you know sitting in front of the tv I would see cats come on the commercial you know the, right. the Broadway tour of cats and I was uh-huh. just, I didn't know what it was, who, who, you know, what is that, you know, and I had no interest. Um, but there are kids today that totally understand what those commercials are and what that is. And they're totally engulfed in it. I have a niece that is completely engulfed into Broadway. Um, so for me, you know, coming up, I, I had no idea about it. I wasn't exposed to it. Honestly, when I did learn about it, I thought it was cheese. You know, I thought it was cheesy. Um, mm. And it wasn't until... I got into it myself, and and then honestly, it was just from it, it was weird. It was just from like okay, this huge show, Color Purple's coming out, and of course, I was familiar with the movie, and I had done some regional plays. Actually, I did a, a play before that. Actually, it was called Issues. We all got them, and it was a national tour with Kim Fields, Vanessa Williams. Um, uh, there's three Vanessa Williams. Wow. Anyway, I'm not gonna go there. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, most and Angie Stone, and so that was kind of like my first hand at acting, and I really enjoyed it. I really did, and I I, I got the acting bug, and then I did mm-hmm. another musical called Beehive, and then then I auditioned for The Color Purple, and knowing that that was on Broadway um, and a, a Broadway national tour option as well. Um, and I and I was familiar, familiar, like I said, with The Color Purple, which is a legendary film. I was like, you know what? I really want to do this. And I actually auditioned for the role of Nettie. So I right. dressed up. I put my pigtail, my little, you know, little native pigtails in, plaits, <laughs> and my little 
you know, dress and stuff. And I, I embodied Nettie and I got the role. And let me tell you, it changed my whole perception mm-hmm. of Broadway, the writing, the music, the etiquette of it, how serious it is, the, um, the appreciation of it just grew. Mm-hmm. And so, and then I saw other uh, uh, musicals while I was in the play, you know, going to visit New York, I would see other musicals. And so, yeah, I just developed appreciation. And so that's how I got into it. Um, I think the shift with kids today, definitely I, I give, I take my hats off to Hamilton for um, inviting them in mm-hmm. through, through, um, through hip hop, through giving, giving them what they like, you know, relating with them. And, and so it sparked their interest to say, okay, well, what, well, what is this about? You know, let me, let me see what this is about. And then when they went to see it, it, you know, I'm sure they just, you know, their minds were blown, like with the creativity around it and then right. understanding, okay, they're, they're rapping, but then they're actually like blending it with, with a story and acting and you get engulfed in the story. And so next thing you know, you're like, oh shit, I get it. I get it. This is great. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, um, I think it's a beautiful thing because it is an art form that has gone, you know, unappreciated by the youth for years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and, yep. and, yeah, and, you know, um, Heather and I would go to Broadway a lot, and uh, I would often say it's where I would take get my best naps. And then, um, <laughs> we would, and, then we, <laughs> and then we would always get some great power naps at Broadway, but then we went and saw <laughs> Hamilton, and it's just, and uh, also Fela. But, you know, uh, oh, the, yeah. Fela, Hamilton, and Lion King changed my whole pers- – M- Color Purple mm. uh, changed my whole whole perspective um, on it. But, um, yeah, congratulations yes. to you on that. And, I, you know, and I'm sitting there listening to you talk. You have so much history. You know, in the Bay Area, yeah. there's, a, there's a lot of – when you look at the Kamaya, Kalani, uh, Kawapale, you know, um, I could just name all the brilliant – artist especially uh, Janae Aiko I believe Janae. too right is she from the bay I believe or LA I think she's from, she's LA. from LA oh she's yeah LA. now you're right LA mm-hmm. yep mm-hmm. yeah it, it's yeah. a ton of them I, I can name um uh Candace Antique Davis uh Queen's Delight um it's just Netta Brielle it's just a lot of underground artists that are coming up how you know ha- have we heard a song with you and Kalani or you and Kamaya or you and Gawapale or what is that culture like in terms of um, people coming together and doing collaborative efforts and just supporting each other have you been able to get into that realm I have not just yet and what and and I'm going to emphasize just yet okay um you know I thought about like man because me and Guapale grew up together we went to high school together we were in the open course together so there's Damn. literally no reason why we, and actually I used to sing background for her yeah. And um, so, yeah, so there's literally no reason why we should not come together. And it's definitely been on my menu. Um, Keisha okay, Cole. Lonnie. Keisha Cole. Uh, yeah. I remember I used to date a guy um, who was cousins with her ex. And um, he was like, you don't remember Keisha when we, we went over to the house and and, and Keisha was there, and the, you know, I'm like, no, I don't remember, you know. Um, and and but yet we we were in the same circles, you know. Also around Dwayne Wiggins, and because mm-hmm. uh, he was working with her for a while, and my my uh, friend and business par- partner was like, you don't remember Keisha when we were in the bathroom, and Keisha was talking, and I was like, no, I don't remember. <laughs> but then I saw her later um, when she was opening up for Kanye West on tour. I was you know backstage, and I greeted her, and I told her I gave her so much props. Um, but so that, that, that's something that I would love to do is get with my sisters from the Bay and my brothers, um, and, and just, tr- and do something. I've been, you know, I, w- I would love to work with Raphael Sadiq. Um, like I said, Dwayne Wiggins is my boy. That's like a brother to me. Um, you know, uh, gosh, another name is, is leaving my brain, but yeah. So it just hasn't happened yet. And uh, but I'm definitely gonna make that happen. Some collabs with some Oakland, with some Bay Area folks for sure. Absolutely, because when you think you hear all these names, she's naming uh, HB. Like, can you imagine mm-hmm. a Oakland-based project with? I'm just we just named Keisha Cole, Raphael Sadiq, Kalani. We didn't even we didn't even name uh, Lettucey, uh Gawapale. Oh gosh, yeah. You, you know, uh, you know, uh, all of these different incredible artists 
the Bay should be doing. I don't know, man. Somebody we, got. We, we gotta need get, like. <laughs> We need, we need to come together and do like a self destruction, like you know, like yeah. maybe, you know, or um, got to put ourselves got together, to get to. something, especially in this climate, right? Mm-hmm. Like uh, let's all in the same game. Do an anthem, yeah. yeah. Well, exactly. Okay. Yeah, that's the other one I was thinking of. Yeah, something for this climate and just to show that camaraderie. Um, mm-hmm. You get Rafael yeah, Sadiq. There's so many of us. You get one of those younger producers that's out there. Team up with Rafael Sadiq. Everybody will come exactly. on board. Get Hammer to say something in the beginning. Get Sweetie. Heck yeah. You know, get everybody on board. Yeah. Sweetie, Sweetie. You know, let's get them all, right? Let's get them all. Yo, let's get them all. Let's get them all. Get, everybody get a verse. Alley, 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 cuff. I'm going to do a Bay Area call. Hootie who? Oh, that's the A. But I'm alley, 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 come free, free. Like, we should call them all. Call them. That would be dope, right, HB? If, that's if we, so Yeah, then they good. could come perform for Sway Fest 2021. There you exactly. go, right there. Come on. I, yes. so, I so, a, so appreciate you blessing us on that stage. We got some callers right here. We're going to play your new single, too. Uh, Lori's on the uh-huh. line from the town. Grand Risings, Lori, how are you? Hey, Lori. I am well. Hey. I am That's my well. cousin, Thank y'all. You for taking my cup. <laughs> oh, okay. What up, cousin Lori? <laughs> hey, Do I know? I didn't let him know that. I didn't let him know that. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, do we know each other, Lori? Have we ever met? We've not met. I would love to make your acquaintance. Absolutely. We'll make that happen, okay? All uh, right. Beautiful. Uh, so what did you want to contribute? Well, I, you know, I've followed Latoya. Of course, she is my family, and, I, you know, she's done so much. I appreciate her for not only who she is, but all that she do, does in trying to bring back to her own community but she has such a big heart. She's been so blessed and she's received so much. But I do remember a comment and I tell you, Latoya, you don't know, but it stuck with me. And I often think about you when I hear people doing philanthropist work. And I know you you have a big heart and you want to give back in so many ways. I want to hear more about what it is you want to do in your work as a philanthropist. How do you want to make an impact, not just locally, but abroad, globally? Mm. Well, one thing that I do love to do is work with artists, up and coming artists, uh, people that, you know, uh, you know, want to get better at their craft. They, you know, may have stage fright, you know, they may just need to get, you know, have a breakthrough. Um, And with, you know, them taking arts out of the school, um, you know, and people just, art, art, period. Mm -hmm. Self-expression is so important. Yes, we can work nine to fives and make money and all that, but what are you doing to express your inner, your inner spirit, right? And so that could be through acting, that could be through singing, that could be through instrumentation. Um, So being that this is something that I do, I would love to give give back in that way on a regular, um, as something that I have been doing, I've done workshops and, um, I would love to create some type of, um, school or, or after school program or something where that is available to people every day. Absolutely. Lori, Lori excellent question. Thank you for your question, Lori. Looking forward to meeting you and so, your citizen, cousin. your citizen cousin. A sway in the morning, cousin, cousin. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Uh, Susie on the line from Phoenix. Say, say, Grant. Susie Grand Rides and say hi to Latoya London. Oh, she hung up. What All up, right, Susie? Cool. No, she just uh, hung, Susie got out. I think her kid hung up her phone by mistake. Um, uh, Latoya, let's let's talk about the new uh, single because that's why I asked you about you know uh, earlier where we were having a conversation about you know not being physical in relationships. You got a new single called Forever, you know, mm-hmm. and, and when you it's a uh, the video is. The cinema, uh, cinematology of the video is amazing. It's a very beautiful bu- video. It feels almost like you're in a, a in a fantasy state. In the beginning of the video, you're holding this book. In the, in the book, it says the world's last mysteries, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, um, what is the significance of that? I was wanting to understand the tie. Is it what is, in your opinion, the world's last mystery, and why did you put that in that video? Well, you know, there's a lot of mysteries of the world and um, there's a lot that, you know, we don't know, you know, history, the history we learn in school only goes back so far. 
um, a lot of stuff you can't find on the internet. And so you got to go to books to find it, you know? Um, and so basically what my purpose is, is encouraging people to find truth and history within books. And so, and I necessarily haven't read all of the books that I've shown in that video. However, mm -hmm. um, some of the authors I know, some of the books, um, I know they're great books. I'm still learning myself. And so it was just kind of like just dropping gems. You know, hey, go check this out. Hey, go check that out. And there are plenty of other books out there that I have, you know, that weren't in my video that I don't even know about that are out there for us to learn more about who we are. Uh-huh. And, and so is that forever? Uh, you could look at that video and hear that song and think you're talking about a love uh, it, you might assume it's about love towards an individual, but exactly. is that what? Yeah, but is that what forever is supposed to mean, or is it a double entendre? It, it's um, it's really, it's not even it's about self love. That's self love. It's, about. it's okay. not about yeah, it's not about um a significant other. Um, mm -hmm. it's about yourself. It's about us, humanity. We are forever. We go on. Our spirits live on. Our loins, you know, when we when we procreate, we we go on forever. Our lineage, mm -hmm. um, and so that was about me um, celebrating my heritage and and embracing the fact that um, you know we all come from this. The human race comes. This is our history. The human race is history. Mm -hmm. And it, it's going to go on forever. And we're all a part of it. So um, so everyone that sings that can say, I'm forever. If I you like are that. human, you can say, I'm forever. I just keep going. I just keep, keep going. Keep and going. be proud of that. Be That's proud right. of that. I ain't mad at that. Yeah. And who who wrote this? Did you write it? or? I I did um, myself uh, and David P. Stevens and uh, and Queen. We wrote it all together, and um, David P. Stevens did the music um, along with a, another producer. Um, I, his name uh, slips my mind, but um, I so apologize for that. But yeah, um, yeah, we we knocked that out, and the video was directed by my cousin Ramir out of Oakland. Hey, big up, big, big up to him. And um, we actually recorded the video right in Oakland, actually, in uh -huh. my other cousin's backyard. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 Believe what, it or not. What, what, there where, you go. What, what part of Oakland? East Oakland? Y'all East, yeah, East uh, Oakland, folks. Yeah, but yeah, it was East Oakland <laughs> up in Grass Valley. Up at Grass Valley, that oh okay. Yeah. See, let me explain Grass Valley to you, HB and, and Tracy. <laughs> you, 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 you you can't go, you can't live in Grass Valley unless you're making six figures or up. So that's that's Grass Valley. That's up over by Nolan Park. <laughs> yeah, they yeah, yeah. They, they're seeing views and trees. Anytime you see, <laughs> if you seeing trees that you don't smoke in Oakland, you in a very expensive neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks yeah. amazing. It looks amazing, and this is for the a forthcoming project, right? Yes, yes. Um, it'll be out next spring, top of spring next year. Okay, okay. Yep. And I uh, it's going to be awesome. It already is. Uh, you're awesome. Proud of you. Latoya London, ladies and gentlemen. Give a big round of applause. Anything Thank else you, you want to so touch on, Latoya, before we go? Um, I just, you know, want to just give a shout-out to – all my family, all my friends, and all my love, extended loved ones, um, and fans that continually have supported me, encouraged me from day one. I just, I love y'all. Um, the, the, the new family that I have that never heard of me, that know of me now, welcome. Um, I hope to, um, <laughs> I hope to uh, give you some, some more music that you can enjoy. And, and, you know, I'm here to just, to give my gift, you know, God gave me a gift and I just want to uh, share it and do what I was put here to do. And, um, and I'm back and I'm, I'm just really happy about it. And Absolutely. We're happy for you Amen. and we're happy Thank because you. of it. And I'm a play forever. This is available now. So go stream it, download it. Let's get some money in Latoya's pocket. Uh, um, and uh, continue success. Yeah. We yeah.